Om Shri Sai Ram, offering my most humble pranams and reverential gratitude at the lotus feet of our beloved Bhagwan, my dear Swami. Let us continue in this beautiful pilgrimage to Hadshi and Mumbai along with Swami, which he undertook in the October and November of 2009. In the second episode of this serial or the series, I had narrated how we all landed in Pune and while the majority of the students, almost the entire entourage proceeded towards Hadshi in a bus, Brother Sai Prakash and myself, we landed up at the Jadhav residence in Pune. Now even as I entered the house of the Jadhavs, I could perceive a total difference in the atmosphere. It was not the atmosphere inside, it was the atmosphere. <laughs> That's how I would like to call it because just crossing the threshold made so much of difference. There was a lot of security outside and there was hustle and bustle and there were huge crowds that had already gathered. You know, it's amazing how uh, devotees find the Lord. But then it is also not amazing because it is just like the bees find the rose and the lotus. They just get attracted just like the moths and butterflies get attracted to the flame. In that way the devotee gets attracted. So already huge crowds had been building outside and somehow I had wended my way and just got in. Inside, oh, there was a hushed silence. There was a divine anticipatory excitement. I could not see Swami, but I could understand the vibrations and the atmosphere, as I said, from the looks of the few people whom I could see. One of them was Sai Prakash. At the end of the corridor in the big hall, I could see there Sai Prakash standing with the video camera, definitely taking video of Bhagwan. So I also got my camera ready and just straightened my shirt, everything because having run and having done all that, I was now getting into the Divine Presence. I walked into the hall. My head was bowed. I didn't look at anyone. I didn't acknowledge anyone because I didn't know where Swami would be looking. In case he is looking, you know, Swami doesn't like these grand entries and grand exits. Everything must happen very subtly, very silently. So I just walked in and took my place beside Sai Prakash. And once I just could see from the corner of the eyes that nobody had been disturbed, I just looked up. Oh my God, what a beautiful sight. Swami was at the head of a little dining table and Swami was being given his lunch. More than Swami eating for himself, it was to give joy to the, these devotees and uh, the preparations. You know, you should um, know that this was the first time ever that I am seeing Swami from so close having food, having lunch. I could see that there were more than 30-40 items that had been prepared. All of them a lavish spread. But that is just outside Swami's plate. Because inside Swami's plate was just teaspoons, not even teaspoons, tiny bit, wee bit. The smallest quantity servable possible. That is all that were there in Swami's plate and Swami was gently eating it so delicately, so beautifully, so elegantly, so neatly. You know when Swami eats, only the tips of his fingers, they get the food. I mean, rest of the fingers, the palm, clean, absolutely clean. It's, it's so royal. It's, he's, after all, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So delicately Swami was gently eating, such elegance, such charm, so beautiful. And even as he did that, I got my camera ready, I was clicking pictures. Suddenly Swami looked up and he saw me. At a physical level, it was the first time that he was seeing me after the flight. Immediately his eyes became big and a beautiful smile blossomed on his face. It was as if he was acknowledging, oh, you have come, very nice. Such was the dramatic smile and widening of the eyes that when Swami looked at me that way, I could sense that everybody else, there were about 20 to 30 people of 
definitely the Jadav family members. As I mentioned in the previous part, nobody else would have been allowed into the house. So all of them looked up and they were looking at me, uh, wondering who is this person to whom Swami is smiling. And it is possibly at that moment that others also uh, realized that another member had come into the house. And uh, that was because of Swami's smile. I was overjoyed. I was so thrilled. I just smiled back at Swami and I was in my heart oozing with gratitude for that warm reception. So wonderful it felt. After that, Swami continued to eat. But more than eating, Swami was interested in knowing the names of the different items that had been made. So, <laughs> he was enjoying the visual treat, not eating much at all. He was asking, what is this? What is that? And his interest seemed to have got captured with one particular dish. This was the Sabudana Vada. You know, this Sabudana Vada that was there, Swami inquired how it is made, what is it about? It is usually made uh, on the fasting days. Anything with Sabudana is made on the days we fast and Swami seemed interested in that. Immediately, uh, Mr. Jadav, Shivaji Rao Jadav offered Swami a vessel full of these Vadas and he said, Swami, have some. Swami said, no, 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 I don't want to. He said, Swami, please. No, it's okay. At that very moment, Something interesting happened. Mrs. Shivaji Rao Jadhav, she came up to Swami with a plate full of eats. And they looked like little cubes, very small cubes, neatly cut into uh, shapes and sizes. And uh, Swami asked, what is this? Then she said, Swami, the same Sabudana Vada. And then Mr. Shivaji Rao explained to Swami that Swami, that same vada, she has cut it and she has got it. Swami became so happy with this a little act of hers, you know. Swami said, yes, this I will take. Looking back, it feels like Swami did not want the whole Sabudana vada, but he didn't want to take one and take a little bite and the rest of it goes waste. In fact, nothing from the divine plate ever goes waste because it comes to all hungry devotees. When I say hungry, it's not a physical hunger that I'm talking about. Maybe physical hunger is there, but the yearning, the hunger of a devotee to accept what has come as prasad from the Lord. So in that sense, never does anything in Swami's plate go waste. But Swami is such a you know perfectionist. His life is his message, as Swami says, and therefore, he takes only that much what he can finish and consume. <laughs> so, he took small dices of those vada and he ate it, he relished them. So beautiful it was for me, viewing Swami, enjoying that food, enjoying more than the food, the devotion of the devotee who is offering. This is possibly how Shabari must have felt, you know, while feeding Rama those berries which she had chewed on. Because it is the devotion that the Lord consumes. Your bliss is my food, Swami says. And then Swami told <clears throat> Brother Satyajit and Mr. V. Srinivasan, who was back then the All India President of the Satsai organizations, he told both of them, they had accompanied uh, Swami from Puttaparthi. So Swami said, you also have your lunch. So they sat down to have lunch. I was feeling so hungry. My stomach was groaning. From morning, I had not had anything. Because throughout, right in the morning, I was so excited to eat anything that was offered in the hostel. I was thinking, why should I eat this? Let me go to Harshi. There will be awesome food there. Because first time I'm traveling with Swami. And then in the flight also, I was busy taking photographs. Luckily, somebody came to both Sai Prakash and me and offered food. And no, we were in no position to eat food. So they said some fruit salad. And they offered fruit salad. I was waiting to accept it. But at that very moment, again Swami looked at both of us and now uh, <laughs> I didn't know what should be done. I was just looking at Sai Prakash. Sai Prakash said later. So I also copied him and I said later, <laughs> though I really wish to eat it because I was so hungry. But uh, looking at Swami, it appeared as if Swami was very satisfied with our response. You know, The family members interacted with Swami. One of them was telling Swami, I have completed my bachelor's in commerce and I would like to do MBA. Swami said, no, no, do chartered accountancy. That for you in the family business. Swami is very practical. So he gave this advice. After all was done, Swami said, yes, let us go to Hadshina. So, Aarti, they came with the Aarti. <laughs> and there were no singers, no official singers. All the singers, the 
the mega singers the superstar singers all who had come all had already left for harshi in the bus right so i started singing the aarti again so grateful to swami for that opportunity in my loud voice i started om jay jagadish hare swami satya sai hare oh it was a great joy to be the lead singer <laughs> and aarti was done and different members of the family came and held the aarti plate and lovingly gave aarti and swami waited usually what would happen is swami receives a little bit of the aarti and swami would start moving out right here swami stood for a couple of stanzas to give them the joy of performing the aarti and then he moved out of the house into the car and now again that's it the the divine atmosphere which i said was inside the house it got transferred outside the house because this atmosphere this atmosphere is not dependent on inside or outside it is dependent on swami's presence wherever swami is it is the atmosphere and that is why we should cultivate his presence in the inner recesses of our hearts we should build the atmosphere with inside swami went and sat in the car it was a toyota estima car a large sized car and three rows of seats swami was sitting in the middle seat and swami's journey began towards harshi all of us got into the same cars that we had all come in you know so i again got into the car with mr uttam rao jadav and uh, we proceeded and as we were driving you know hadshi is about 40 45 kilometers from pune so it is about an hour to 90 minutes about 80 to 90 min- minutes drive from there and as we went along the drive mr uttam rao jadav the elder jadav brother was telling me about the various preparations that they had done for this divine visit and it was simply amazing the little little details that they had taken care of to ensure that swami and the entourage and most importantly all the devotees would uh, be served well it was amazing i am almost tempted to reveal those details but i think later on as those details come by themselves as we witness them i will narrate there uh, in fact mr uttam raj jadav told me see swami coming to a, the home in pune was a last minute thing so we didn't have time to prepare in last minute swami gave us a great blessing and said okay i will come so it was not prepared it was not we were not prepared for it i was just wonder struck this was the last minute preparation i was i just told him i wonder how it will be at hardshi because you knew in advance he said you come and see the glory there you see how we are prepared Oh my god he had definitely that joy that we had not left any stone unturned in preparing for swami and i could see evidence of that even as we drove along throughout the journey there were hundreds and hundreds of people who would line along the road to offer their prostrations and salutations to swami uh, who was in the car about three two cars ahead of us you know swami's car then the security car then we were the entire uh, convoy was there so many cars were so similar you know though swami in terms of the brand was a separate car toyota estima very similar looking to the toyota innova so there were multiple innovas in the convoy so people would get confused which car swami is in and they would just stand there offering their salutations to all the cars See, that that is the impact of the lord when we are in the company of the lord when we are in the lord's convoy everything receives <laughs> salutation every car receives not just swami's car so all these were there along the way and very soon we began to climb up the hill the hill now as we arrived at the main gates the two huge gates were opened for swami and i could see a red carpet a red carpet welcome for the lord of the lords i quickly got out of the car i told sai prakash as well that let's get out and you know let's take photos of swami and i mean let's capture this moment when swami is entering panduranga kshetra i had thought that like it is in puttaparthi and dundavan the gates will open swami will enter in and about 50 60 meters away will be swami's residence where he will go <laughs> i was sadly mistaken as we entered oh my god a huge expanse a sea of people opened out there was a uh cordoned off pathway through which swami's car was going there were barricades that had been erected and one side was the gents one side was the ladies and swami's car was going in the center 
and a huge procession preceded Swami's car. Dancers, singers, all traditional Maharashtrian style. There was so much of energy. The whole area, there was a song going on. Shubha Swagatam Suswagatam Bhagavan Shri Satya Sai Babana Abhivadanam means in Marathi it was that welcome, we offer our heartfelt salutations and gratitude and welcome to the divine Bhagavan Shri Satya Sai Baba, to our Lord, to our God. Wow, I mean, it was an electrifying, excited and thrilling and uh, beautiful atmosphere filled with devotional fervor. Swami's car slowly made its way through went on clicking and I realized that more than half a kilometer, 500, 600 meters away was another gate. So far it is. But, but it was a joy to keep capturing all of these photographs. And of course, Sai Prakash was there shooting the video. Then came the next gate. And at that gate, I had the first sight of the mandir. Uh, the residence. Well, we call the residence as mandir because isn't the residence of God called Mandir? <laughs> so this Mandir, to look at it, my God, the three domed, golden domed structure, so beautiful in that evening, in the afternoon light. It was a very harsh sunlight and uh, that's why possibly the entire area had been carpeted. That's what I say is the thoughtfulness of the Jada brothers. <clears throat> the entire area, not just for Swami or for the VIPs, for the devotees, for everyone, it had been carpeted so that uh, the heat doesn't uh, harm or hurt anyone. The carpet color changed from red to green <laughs> as we came to Swami's residence. And even as the gates opened, it was a divine ambience. There was uh, an expert playing the Shehnai, beautiful tunes. This is how royal welcomes are, you know. And later on, we got to see over the next few days that every day this person playing the Shehnai would be sitting there and playing the Shehnai and to the welcoming sounds of the Shehnai and the bugle and the performing groups, Swami's car entered the residence. Now, I forgot to tell one interesting thing that had happened along the journey. As we were coming, you know, uh, Uttam Rav Jadav Ji, he looked at me and said, you know, Swami came to the home, no doubt, but how happy he was when he saw you. Oh my God, you students are so special. Swami loves you all so much and Swami is so happy when you are there. Now hearing that, I felt so grateful to Swami. So that's why, you know, I was able to jump out and take photos because I was in some really high spirits. Despite me being very hungry and tired, ah, Swami's love is a kind of, what do I say? It's amazing. It takes you to new highs. So. Then I saw the main door of the residence of the mandir was open and there was a pink ribbon tied across it because Swami was obviously going to inaugurate it. Now I thought it will be nice if I go on to the other side and click a photo of Swami inaugurating it. As I tried to rush there, some people re immediately the volunteers jumped in, stopped me and said, no, 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 they were pushing me back. I didn't know, I didn't expect this. At that time, the younger Jadav, uh, he came running and said, no, no, no leave him, leave him. You know, if he is there, Swami will look and smile as well. <laughs> he was also remembering that smile, the younger brother. In the car, it was the elder brother. No, the younger brother also was remembering that smile that Swami had given. And see, dear brothers and sisters, we make efforts to make so many people happy. But if we are able to make God smile, ah, that's it, the whole world will smile. That is what... I have realized again and again in my life that one smile there had impressed the elder brother and now the younger brother allowed me imagine to go into an uninaugurated building. I entered before Swami and that is how I could capture these images of Swami pulling the ribbon and inaugurating and with that inauguration there was applause and inside the home where few members of the Jadav family who were allowed Outside was the rest of the family, a huge family, this whole family tree with its primary trunk and branches, so many were there. And I think only the primary trunk and the significant branches had been allowed inside. Uh, about 20, 30 of them were inside the residence now. Rest of them, possibly overall 200 were there, family members, 200, 250 maybe. They were all outside, just outside the residence. So all got in and it was a large hall on the ground floor 
with four rooms in the four corners. In the northern end of the hall, there was a massive dining table for Swami and some of the uh, some of his guests because three four uh, chairs were there at the table. And on the southern side, there were multiple small tables for the others to eat. And in the north uh, eastern side was the kitchen. People were ready. Lunch was ready for Swami to have. But then Swami said, no, 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 I have had lunch. He had had, right, at the uh, Jadav's home. So Swami said, no, I have had lunch. Swami took a couple of rounds in the ground floor of this building. He went around once or twice, just checking whether all are fine, everyone is happy. And Swami said, very good, very nice. The place is very nice. And then there was one little lift that was there for Swami to go up. Before Swami could go there, in the meanwhile, the bus came. The bus took so much time. <laughs> the bus arrived now and all the others got down and they're all coming. And Swami was so happy to see the students. And you know, this is the reason, dear brothers and sisters, that students are given so much importance. Because Swami gave importance, that's all. Otherwise, nobody would care for us. Nobody would care a damn. Honestly, this is a, this is a truth that I'm saying. Really, even in any other place that we go to, it's only that, oh, Swami is giving so much attention, so we better care for them. Otherwise, who cares for us? Who cares for anybody? It's only the Lord. Every time, Swami would always ensure, our students, ah, you have come, you have come. And everybody realized that you want to make Swami happy, take care of these students very well. That is, that is Swami's love. I, I really don't know what else to say because honestly, don't know what do we do to deserve this love. And that is why Swami says, no reason for love, no season for love. Because I don't think we have done anything to deserve that. Swami just chose to shower it. That's it. So then Swami goes and Swami went into the lift to go up because that's where in the northwestern corner was Swami's room. So when Swami was going into the lift, it was a small lift. Only Brother Satyajit and Swami could fit in. As the grill was closed, Swami raised his fingers to say, excellent, all arrangements are excellent. And really hats off to the Jadav brothers, to the Satsai organization Maharashtra, to all the devotees who had planned and prepared for this because they got the ultimate certificate from God himself. God said, all arrangements are excellent. There were so many youth who were there inside there who would be there to assist and serve and help. They had been given the opportunity, Maharashtra, Bombay youth. And Swami was very happy. Swami went up and we were all told to sit at the dining tables. When Swami went up, I saw that all the uh, chairs had been occupied. A few of us would have to eat in the second batch. I was so hungry. I went to one of the brothers and said, brother, you had breakfast, right? He said, yes. You ate in the flight, right? Yes. Please get up. I'm very hungry. <laughs> so I made one of the brothers get up and I sat in the first round itself. And even as I sat, everyone was looking up and I looked up. Swami had come to the atrium area. Now this building, as I said, had the entire ground floor. And on the first floor, it was divided into two halves connected by a narrow corridor. And in the middle was a large atrium. So from top, Swami was looking at all of us sitting at the dining table. We all saluted. We all uh, did Namaskar. Swami said, you have, take rest. And Swami went into the room. And all of us sat and had a sumptuous lunch. Once this <laughs> lunch was complete, we were led to our rooms uh, right behind Swami's residence. There were uh, four rooms. Uh, there were three double rooms. Each room had about five or six uh, beds that had been laid out, cots. Oh, they were so comfortable. And after a long journey, all of us went and jumped into bed. They had provided air conditioning, they had provided... It was so amazing. You know, the preparations, each one of us found a bag full of toiletries, the shaving kit, brush, toothpaste. It was better than a five-star uh, hotel, definitely. Towels, bed sheets, everything. In fact, you know, uh, the younger Jadav brother had, interestingly now I remember, he had asked uh, all of us once we had got selected to travel as to which telephone network we were using. And back then in India, we had mainly Airtel and BSNL. These were the uh, Airtel, BSNL. We had a few operators, but two of them were major. And uh, when he found out that most of us had one particular connection, he got a telecom tower erected near the residence, a little distance away 
at Hadshi so that we could all talk to our family and you see this is the level of arrangement and planning that had gone into oh i was just mind blown just mind blown but then we had just one hour now one hour and so we all jumped into bed to take some rest of course some of us could take good rest some of us could not because that's when we discovered that there are a couple amongst us who snore and oh the snoring because they were tired was like some big whirring motors and these motors kept a few of us awake but kept a few of us very blissfully sleeping and i won't tell here whether i was the one getting disturbed or i was the one making a noise i will not tell that here anyway one hour later around maybe 4 4:30 maybe 4:30 we were all ready and we had to rush to the mandir we all went to the mandir and swami came down it was snacks time tiffin time wow i had not been wrong in thinking that when you travel along with swami you get sumptuous food to eat so a magnificent lunch was now being followed by a terrific snack session swami sat at the head of the dining table and he invited the elders giri sir then uh, venkat raman sir who had traveled along with us the all india president as i said vish srinivasan sir all of them swami said sit 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 around dr dash was there you know dr dash he Uh, swami's personal physician and he had uh, accompanied us also in his capacity as a doctor so all of them sat and swami told have so snacks were served and all of them had swami also <laughs> barely swami had anything after that once they had finished swami said yeah yeah get up get up and leave you know so swami was sitting on his normal wheelchair sofa right so swami, so all of the others got up with respectfully and they left the plates were cleared Now surprisingly Swami asked for plates to be set up again six plates there were three chairs on Swami's left three on Swami's right and Swami asked for plates to be set up again and Swami said serve the snacks snacks were again served I was all this while taking photos Swami suddenly looked at me and said come sit three three sit on each side come who I turned at the others and said hey Swami is calling come so the first six I was definitely there because I had the lead so six of us somehow I don't know I didn't go to the uh, chair right next to swami i sat on the chair farthest from swami i don't know i was just so overwhelmed so six of us sat at swami's dining table and swami said hmm start eating so we started a brahmarpanam and oh my god how resounding that brahmarpanam was resounding brahmarpanam we all all six of us were chanting the rest of uh, the students also joined in and it was one resounding brahmarpanam my goodness amazing it was in the presence of brahma all of them had their eyes closed and hands folded i had my hands folded but my eyes were not closed being the first ever you know just that day morning was the first ever time i saw swami eating already i was getting this opportunity first time to dine with swami so i was just looking at him and drinking and consuming swami his radiant face from you just sitting there oh my goodness uh, so lovely so close so intimate so much like a family member oh it is so beautiful that feeling so after the brahmarpanam yeah swami told to eat and even as i put the first morsel in my mouth swami looked at me and said hey photographer has your videographer come immediately i got up and called sai prakash as swami swami yeah swami has come then swami looked at him and said good good go eat well go back go eat well and so sent him back and i felt very nice i my heart i said swami thank you thank you for calling me as your photographer i mean anything swami you call me your anything i want to be yours that's all swami your sweeper your cleaner your your photographer your videographer your writer your whatever swami as long as it is your i want to be your something so we were all slowly eating because as i said having seen swami is so delicate so fine so royal the way he eats uh, we, <laughs> i can't eat normally the way i you know chomping this is the way usually so automatically you know keeping the lips closed without making too much sound neatly small bites you take the bonda with the chutney and the chutney better not get smeared like a mustache or beard for you neatly you have to eat neatly Swami looked at us and Swami said, "Ha, if I'm sitting here you won't be able to eat to your heart's content. I'll go and come you eat." <laughs> so so sweet Swami. And Swami left and as he said once he left we gobbled and <laughs> we ate well. And uh, Swami came back and Swami said, "Yeah, it's time to get ready to 
go there was a program that had been arranged so swami went back to the room freshened up and we also quickly freshened up we were ready around 5:45 swami came swami came down and when swami came down there were some vip guests who had uh, sought permission and had come in swami blessed them and then swami told us to proceed towards the venue the grounds were through which we had come right so we got out and we went in the front again there was a elaborate procession music instruments dance my god what a procession and swami got into the car and swami was coming in the car we went ahead and now when we entered the ground it was more full filled and it was in the evening now 6 o'clock so it had a different look altogether the stage was so magnificent and uh there were there was a music program that had been arranged and swami and the musicians would be on the stage so we all went towards the stage and bhajans were going on everybody was singing bhajans and uh, many singers from even the industry bollywood music industry film industry all had come for this chance to sing bhajans for the lord that's when i realized what a privilege and pleasure it is that we get to sing for the lord singing bhajans you know it is a chance that so many yearn and pine for and this is a chance that we have got and that is the power of sai bhajans let us keep singing his bhajans always so bhajans were going on and there was a separate space that had been kept for us special place right in the front to sit but then again as i said you know swami always thinking of the students and that is what <laughs> we are so grateful for swami as he was getting in from the car He looked at, uh, I think it was Nishikant sir. He looked at and he said, "No, no, all of you come on stage, sit on stage." So Swami invited us. Who can tell anything? So we went on the stage, and right behind where Swami was sitting, all of us, we Vanaras. Uh, <laughs> so Rama had his Vanaras, and as I Rama had this Dunapotas or Vanaras. Dunapotas meaning the buffalo. Swami would often call, "Hey, you Dunapotas." Again. as i said it doesn't matter even if we are a buffalo we should be swami's buffalo that's all doesn't matter if we are a monkey let's be swami's monkey so all of us sat behind on the stage and bhajans went on swami enjoyed the bhajans and now dear brothers and sisters the look on swami's face is so different inside the residence he was a personal swami the friend the family member right now here the god oh so different the same form the same body the same hair the same face and yet the radiance oh it is so different you can't dare to go and talk frivolously or casually with swami here because this is the lord this is narayana this is shiva this is the brahman this is the atman om namo bhagavate rudraya om sahasra shirsha purushah oh om gananam tva whatever you may say that grandeur that glory and and that aura that swami was exuding right that aura was passing on to all the devotees because sitting behind swami sometimes we could not see swami's face but just looking at the devotees faces we could understand what swami is exuding because there was divinity lit on each and every face there what we could see in the front i could see little more because of my zoom lens but wow the devotion was amazing In fact when Swami would come in the car also I don't think so people could see actually Swami through the glass and because it's so tiny and they're so far yet that car itself would receive the adoration and devotion and soul with so much of love and devotion people would look at the car the car became a worshiped object and so here on the stage everyone looking after a while Swami said yes start the program that day the program was by Mr Nitin uh, Mukesh Mrs Kavita Krishnamurthy and Mrs Sapna Mukherjee these three singers had been blessed and Swami accepted roses from all of them and he gave the rose to Mr Nitin Mukesh it was so sweet to watch how Mr Nitin Mukesh clenched that rose throughout throughout there were about nine songs that were sung in the concert by the three of them between the three of them throughout Mr Nitin Mukesh kept clenching at that rose and holding it so close to his heart it was very evident how dear it was for him and it had become dear because that had come from the divine hands after the nine songs when during which everyone enjoyed beautiful darshan as i said not just the arrangement for sitting even the coverage arrangements had been done excellently by uh, the organizers there were cameras 
that were going up and down and zooming in cameras giant screen set up so that everybody could have close darshan on the screens if not directly beautiful environment beautiful atmosphere filled with devotion love and reverence and we all enjoyed the songs at the end of that swami received aarti he blessed the artists he gave them clothes sari and do, and uh, white cloth to uh, mr nitin mukesh then he told them also come to puttaparthi sing there they said yes swami we will come and then swami went back into the car sat and proceeded back to the residence there was such a frenzy everybody wanted to get close to swami touch swami touch the car <laughs> we were told to form the security convoy around uh, the car and uh, you know in a sense we became the wall and tears as i say the wall because of which tears you know <laughs> i was thinking swami every time i used to curse the volunteers thinking they are becoming wall and causing tears in our eyes now i have myself become a, a volunteer preventing security volunteer preventing others from coming anyway i just thought okay swami at least we are causing tears of yearning in their eyes and hopefully that will give us some punyam and wipe out this sin that we are committing by keeping the devotee away from the lord with that swami moved to the residence and uh, this would be dinner time because uh it was late in the evening and swami always has an early dinner and <laughs> the snacks and lunch had not yet digested but that is that is the thing we have to learn that food is not some entertainment option food is not something that we eat and uh, you know for we don't live to eat we should eat to live that is the thing that i learned already by seeing swami for just a couple of sessions then the dinner session that turned out to be memorable but i think that we shall keep for the next session that and what happens later dear brothers and sisters i hope you have enjoyed this third part and i am grateful to swami for this entire journey and for this chance to relive that journey once again dear swami may the love that i have in my heart for you keep growing stronger every passing moment Thank you Jai Sai Ram